If you look at North Korea up here, you can see that it's got uh, this, this advantage in an interesting way. This water on both sides actually makes a big difference because it makes it relatively hard to get in and respond to them. And of course, you have the DMZ down here where they could reach into South Korea with any kind of attack they wanted to stage there. But let's look at the bigger picture of this. Why does all that matter? Because it's a small nation. This is one reason, because of their missile capability. Some of their lesser missiles have a range of 435 miles. As you can see, that completely engulfs all of South Korea and reaches over here toward Japan. Their bigger missiles come all the way out here to 2,500 miles. We've talked a bit about the idea of something that can go all the way to the U.S., but that's sort of off the table right now. The technology doesn't look that good. But these are real. And when you talk about their ground forces, then you start talking about an awful lot of people, simply put. I'll put away the missiles right now and show you. When you talk about their ground forces, 1.1 million active troops in North Korea, almost 5 million in reserve. That's simply an awful lot of people for a small area. 605 combat aircraft, 43 naval missile vessels. These might be very limited if they came out and tried to do anything, Wolf. But when you combine it with all the artillery there, they actually have a somewhat fortified position, Wolf. What kind of defensive system does the U.S. have in the region? We have a lot of bodies there. That's for one thing. In South Korea, for example, look at this. 30,000 U.S. troops are stationed in South Korea. Some F-22 Raptors were sent there just yesterday. If you go to Japan over here, a very strong presence ever since World War II. 3,800 U.S. troops there. A second early warning radar system has been put there to keep track of the missile attacks coming from North Korea. And, of course, down here at Guam, you have 5,700 U.S. troops. And this is one of the most important naval bases in the world for our long-range bombers. So there's a lot of force that could respond to North Korea here, Wolf. But what you're going to have is a push-pull between all of these forces trying to get in from all these different places if it came to that and the conventional flow out of missiles from North Korea if indeed you move to a conventional war. Of course, everyone hopes it doesn't go that way, Wolf, but that's a bit how the lay of the land would be if it did.